Six astronauts with the help of Space Shuttle Discovery on its final flight are completing work to the International Space Station designed to put the station into the best configuration possible for operation beyond the shuttle era. Mission Commander Steve Lindsay, a retired Air Force Colonel, has flown on four previous space flights. He was the pilot on missions STS-87 in 1997 and STS-95 in 1998. In 2001, STS-104 was his first mission as commander, and he also commanded the STS-121 return to flight mission in 2006. Lindsay was serving as NASA's chief astronaut when he was assigned to STS-133. While growing up in the Los Angeles suburb of Temple City, California, Lindsay developed a passion for engineering and for flying. I had pretty much decided early into high school that I kind of wanted to be an engineer. But the other thing I really wanted to do is I wanted to be a pilot. And I got to uh, thinking about what can I do that will allow me to pursue both of those things. He got his answer while visiting the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. In 1982, Lindsay earned a bachelor's degree from the Academy in Engineering Sciences. He went on to become a fighter pilot and flight instructor. He then earned a master's in aeronautical engineering from the Air Force Institute of Technology and became an experimental test pilot. So I got, I got through that process, been a test pilot for several years and uh, realized and kind of wasn't shooting this way, but kind of realized that, well, you know, if, if I were to apply to the astronaut program, an astronaut's job is very similar to this. Um, you know, you combine flying and technology and science and engineering, all of those things together. Lindsay applied to the astronaut corps and was selected by NASA in March 1995. The pilot on the crew is Air Force Colonel Eric Bowe, who is making his second space flight. In 2008, Bowe was the pilot on the STS-126 mission that delivered supplies and amenities to the International Space Station needed to sustain a six-person crew. Bo says some of his most vivid memories from that flight are of gazing down at the Earth. You can really see that the, the Earth is alive, and also you kind of get an appreciation for how, how big the Earth is, and at the same time how small we are as compared to the rest of the universe as you're orbiting the planet. Bo, who grew up in Chambly, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta, says watching TV coverage of astronauts walk on the moon instilled a desire in him to become an astronaut. I thought about, you know, what a neat endeavor that uh, uh, humans had participated actually walk on something that you look at uh, oftentimes in the night sky. And so that was kind of set the bid of something, you know, maybe if I was lucky enough and had the opportunity, I'd like to be an astronaut. After high school, Bo attended the Air Force Academy where he earned a bachelor's in aeronautical engineering. He spent several years as a fighter pilot and instructor before completing work for a master's in electrical engineering at Georgia Tech. Bo was serving as a test pilot at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida when NASA selected him in July 2000. Air Force Colonel Alvin Drew is one of the two spacewalkers on the crew. STS-133 is his second trip to space. During the STS-118 mission to the space station in 2007, he witnessed a rare sight from a space shuttle window. At that moment, uh, a satellite passed between me and the Earth. And I don't think very many astronauts get a chance to see any other body besides maybe the Hubble or the space station, but just some other random satellite. And that was when my thought was, we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> in the first grade, the Washington, D.C. native remembers being faced with a bit of a dilemma after watching a launch of an Apollo mission at school. I went home, you know, very troubled, asked my dad, you know, what should I do? Can I, should I be an astronaut or should I be a pilot? He goes, you can do both those things. All these astronauts have been pilots. After high school, Drew attended the Air Force Academy, graduating with bachelor's degrees in physics and astronautical engineering. He went on to fly helicopter combat missions in Panama, the Persian Gulf, and Iraq as a member of the Air Force Special Operations Command. Later, after obtaining a rating in jet aircraft, Drew became a test pilot. Drew also has master's degrees in aerospace science from Embry-Riddle University and strategic studies in political science from the United States Air Force Air University. He was selected by NASA in July 2000. U.S. Army Colonel Tim Copra is the other spacewalker on the crew. 
The native of Austin, Texas, is making his first trip back to the International Space Station since spending time on board as a member of the Expedition 20 crew in 2009. I think that, uh, that one of the things I'm looking forward to the most is seeing the cupola, uh, observing the planet and, uh, and space, and also uh, looking at these new modules that we've added because it's even bigger than the last time we were there. Like most other kids who watched Apollo astronauts walk on the moon, Copra developed a fascination with space. After high school, he attended the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree. It was during his time at West Point that Copra realized that his dream of becoming an astronaut wasn't so far-fetched. Because there were several people who had graduated from West Point, and uh, even some of my instructors eventually became astronauts. And uh, it went from this unrealistic childhood goal to something that was clearly tangible and possible if you work really hard. Commissioned as a second lieutenant, Copra became an Army aviator. He flew helicopters in Germany and in operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm. He went on to earn a Master of Science in Aerospace Engineering at Georgia Tech and completed training at the Navy Test Pilot School. Copra, who also holds a Master's in Strategic Studies from the U.S. Army War College, came to NASA's Johnson Space Center as a Vehicle Test Integration Engineer in 1998. He was selected as an astronaut in July 2000. Mission Specialist Dr. Mike Barrett is the second of three former Space Station crew members on this mission. In 2009, Barrett spent about 199 days on board ISS with Expeditions 19 and 20. As a space medical specialist, my flight experience was like a dream come true. I was able to kind of personally look at my own adaptation process, both physiologic, what the body does in response to zero gravity, and behavioral, how you learn to operate and perform well in zero gravity. And then I saw that in various other people as well. Barrett grew up in Camas, Washington, a farming community that sits along the Columbia River near Vancouver. It was an area that helped him develop a number of interests. I wanted to be a marine biologist at one time, an astronomer, an archaeologist, and when I went to undergrad at the University of Washington, my focus was marine zoology. And probably uh, late during my uh, undergrad years, I started getting interested in space. And the more I went through medical school, I realized that space is a field that puts so many things together that, that I love. After finishing medical school at Northwestern University, Barrett stayed in Chicago for residencies at Northwestern and at Lakeside Veterans Administration Hospital. He then completed the aerospace medicine program at Wright State University near Dayton, Ohio. Barrett came to the Johnson Space Center in 1991 as a project physician for Space Station Freedom. He became a NASA flight surgeon the following year and was selected as an astronaut in July 2000. Nicole Stott is the third member of Discovery's crew who has completed a long-duration space mission. From August to November of 2009, Stott was an ISS flight engineer for the Expeditions 20 and 21 crews. Stott was born in Albany, New York, but grew up in Clearwater, Florida in a family that loved aviation. You know, my dad had a real passion for flying that he shared with us as a family. And he built a couple airplanes, small um, aerobatic airplanes uh, that started in our garage and then would move to the airport. It got in my blood there. And uh, that's kind of what, you know, really helped me choose what I wanted to do. After high school, Stott earned her pilot's license by completing a program at St. Petersburg College. She later earned a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering from Embry-Riddle University, then applied for a job at NASA. But the agency was in a hiring freeze at that time, so Stott took a job at Pratt & Whitney as a structural design engineer. About a year later, NASA began hiring again and Stott landed a job as an operations engineer at the Kennedy Space Center's Orbiter Processing Facility. And had just a fantastic experience there. I mean, you are right there, you walk down into the hangar and there's a, an orbiter above you and the opportunity to get in the crew module or you know, work inside the payload bay and working every aspect of processing from landing to launch. In 1992, Stott earned a master's degree in engineering management at the University of Central Florida. Then in 1998, she came to the Johnson Space Center to work as a flight simulation engineer on the shuttle training aircraft. NASA selected Stott as an astronaut in July 2000. 